The police? Already? How did you know? May we see the Bishop of Knightsbridge? Yes. Yes, of course. But come in. What has happened, Reverend? What? I... I don't know. It was last night, I think. I only just arrived, and I have made this macabre discovery. My God. How horrible. I haven't called anyone. How did you know that? Holmes! Look! The bishop, appallingly mutilated. How dreadful. Mutilated? And killed? He was such a good man. How could anyone be so brutal? Look at him. He is barely recognizable now. How could any of God's children be responsible for that? They were evidently unworthy children, Reverend. Now do please try to calm yourself and focus, because we will need your assistance. Do you have any idea as to the motive behind this? I haven't had time to do an inventory, but nothing appears to have been stolen. And anyway, His Excellency didn't own anything of great value. I don't know what else I can tell you. Note this down, please, Doctor. Doctor? But you aren't the police? No, Reverend. I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We are here at the request of the Bishop. In that case, I must ask you to leave, and not to touch anything. I must get in touch with the authorities without further delay. Uh, Reverend, when the inspectors of Scotland Yard find themselves at a dead end, which they quite often do, I assure you, then they turn to me for help. If you will allow us to continue our investigation, then you shall have the answers to all of your questions. Out of the question! I don't even know you! I'm going to call the police, whether you like it or not. It would be better for everyone, Reverend, if you kept your temper. Watson, are you taking notes? This affair promises to be a complex one, therefore we must not overlook the slightest detail. Yes, Holmes. I am keeping a meticulous set of notes. I have created a very clever deduction board. One thing we can be sure of at the moment is that this crime was not for gain. The Reverend has informed us that nothing valuable was stolen, and indeed, it would seem that the Bishop had nothing of any worth to take. Very good, Watson. Do continue. Watch where you're putting your feet, Watson. Have you noticed these prints upon the ground? Well, yes, those muddy marks. See here, Watson. Footprints can often provide more vital information than the very best of informants. Yes, if you know how to make them talk, that is. It's child's play, Watson. We will begin by excluding the contaminating prints, which are yours and mine from where we came in, and those of our dear Reverend, who was so impatient to call the police. Size 9. Size 9. Size 9 and a half. Size 9. Size 9 and a half. Size 9. This print came from an expensive pair of shoes, and it seems recent. It is not a laborer's shoe. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. 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 A fragment of stone. Peculiar. Well-worn shoes with an odd pattern on the soles. I need something. Perfect. We now know that there were three crooks.
strange but true. One of the crooks was wearing a different pair of shoes when he left here. Therefore, we have three men who came in and left again, but one of them was wearing a different pair of shoes from the ones which he came in with. So, all we have to do is look for a workman who likes Italian shoes. A surgical scalpel covered in blood. Closed. The veranda door hasn't been forced. Strange. Reverend, might I have the key? No! You have no authority here. Let me call the police. Perhaps we should listen to him, Holmes. Perhaps you should let me get on with this, Watson. This door has not been forced. Where does it lead, Reverend? To His Excellency's room. There is just a mattress and a stool. The bishop's bedroom. It is very austere. Nothing in particular here. It is impossible to get out. The picture of Peregrine Maitland, commander of the infantry brigade of Her Majesty's guards at Waterloo. The Bishop of Knightsbridge has the same name as his ancestor, an illustrious family. impossible to open it. Reverend, I'm missing something, an implement with which to open this chest. Could you tell me where to find it? No! Go to the devil! What are you afraid of, Reverend? What is inside the chest? I'm not afraid of anything. In fact, I do have the necessary implements, but if I have to give them to anyone, it will be to a representative of the law and no one else. You have no right to search here. A broken phial and blood near the neck. What a strange smell. Phew. Chemical components, I think. This stove is filled to overflowing. You can see by his expression that he suffered terribly. His mouth is covered in blood, and I can make out strips of skin between his teeth. His chest has been lacerated, I would say, with a very sharp and fine blade. There isn't any doubt the wounds on the bishop were administered with this scalpel. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. His forearms have been ripped. Pieces of skin have been torn off. What do you think, Watson? I'd say that he was eaten alive. Yet I've noticed a curious degeneration of the skin tissue around the wounds. My dear friend, everything points to this man having gnawed at his own forearms. That's unbelievable, Holmes. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. A piece of rope that was used to tie up that poor man. A finger. Apparently it doesn't belong to the Bishop of Knightsbridge. How dreadful! These burns are terrible. This poor man was tied just below the knees. To stop him from walking, certainly, but mostly to free his feet. His feet have been burned. Hmm. My first impression is that he wears a size 9 shoe. You? But what does it matter, Holmes? My God, Holmes, this man was horribly tortured.
His stomach is covered in scratches. Quite evidently, they weren't made recently. So, these wounds were not made by his murderers. Something is missing here. Oh, yes? And what might that be? His shoes. Watson, his shoes are missing. A whip? No, it is a discipline for self-flagellation. It's a silice designed to bruise the person wearing it. The bishop wore it as repentance. This very pious man must have had the habit of mortifying his flesh as a means of repentance. This metal rod is for fastening the chilies. There is blood on this paperweight. This paperweight was used to crush the victim's fingers. A bottle of whiskey. I can make out fingerprints stained with blood and dirt. A broken bottle of whiskey. However, the Bishop of Knightsbridge was known for his sobriety. It would seem that the brutes who tortured the bishop to death were intoxicated with alcohol. Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. Perfect. It is evident that the Bishop of Knightsbridge's killers were after something specific, and that they did not find it. Reverend, I shall ask you one more time. Open the chest. The item they were seeking must still be inside. It is unlikely that they will let this matter rest. They will most certainly return to finish what they started. And I am telling you once more, the chest is locked and shall remain so. Very well. We have reached an impasse. You are a stubborn man, Reverend. Watson, accompany our friend to the police station and return with Inspector Baines. Baines and no one else. I shall wait for you here. Go. Alone at last. Now I can continue my investigation. This lock should be easy to pick. Let's see. There we are. It is simplicity itself. There isn't anything much in this room. It must be used as a reading or meditation room. An ink stain, quite fresh. This stain is just on the edge of the rug. Let's see. There is nothing on the floor, yet the ink must have soaked through the rug.
This inkwell was tipped over recently. An ink stain. The ink stain on the floor comes from the ink on the rug, but they are not in the same place. Someone has moved the rug recently. That is curious. There is something strange on the floor. Certain stones have been marked out, just like a chessboard. That is curious. There is something... I need something. Apparently, someone wanted to hide this statue. This horse resembles a large chess piece. There is a message underneath this statue. Let's see. This message was written by a woman, but for whom was it intended? Interesting, this chess game. This last piece should be the good one. It will have to be pulled free. of letters addressed to the Reverend. They were written by a woman who mentions his illegitimate children. Their affair isn't official. Perfect. I have you now, my wayward Reverend. Ah, Watson. You were gone a terribly long time, and Inspector Baines isn't with you. I'm afraid not, Holmes. We were unable to find him. Dr. Watson would not allow me to contact any inspector other than this Baines. What manners! I am a man of the church. My dear Reverend, I notice that you are a chess lover. I trust you will excuse me, but I am never able to resist the appeal of a half-finished game. You are an expert at chess. Very well, then. What do you want now? As you might have guessed, resolving your small chess problem has allowed me to discover some very interesting letters. Letters? What do they say? Reverend, why hide these letters here and run the risk of the bishop finding them? Holmes, what's in the letters? Not now, Watson. Where else could I have hidden them? My own chambers are too austere. They could offer no cover. I knew, however, that His Excellency, may he rest in peace, would not notice my game. The contents of the Bishop of Knightsbridge's chest interest me greatly. Give me the elements you hold, Reverend. Out of the question. I am a gentleman, and it would distress me to be obliged to pass this correspondence across to your superiors. Holmes, I know that the end justifies the means, but allow me to express some reservations about how you are proceeding. You say you're a gentleman, but I hear nothing but the words of a blackmailer. The stems that you are looking for are scattered about this room. Manage by yourself.
You have won. Evidently, as I always do. What are you able to tell us about the Bishop of Knightsbridge's last days? Did anyone come to visit him? Did he seem worried, anxious? Do not omit the smallest detail. His nephew came to see him yesterday at His Excellency's request. I found this visit a little peculiar because the young man rarely visits his uncle. Do you know why that might be? Were they on bad terms? I don't think so. It's rather a consequence of his work. The young man is employed within the archive section of the Royal Library, which doesn't leave him with a lot of free time. Do you know the reason for his summons? No, but the conversation was very heated. It only lasted for a few minutes and ended with the nephew in a terrible rage. Interesting. I've answered your questions. Will you now let me contact the authorities? I'm afraid not, Reverend. Not just yet. All right, now we can open the safe. Now I can open the chest. Here we are. I am eager to discover what remarkable treasure could justify such an act of barbarity. Extraordinary! This chest is impenetrable. How is it possible? No one other than the bishop should be able to open it. You open the chest with disconcerting ease, Holmes. I've seen and heard quite enough. This time you won't stop me. Catch him, Watson. What the... But why? Run, Watson. Hurry! He's escaped. I hope that your motivations are founded, Holmes. I don't much like skirting around the edges of the law like this. It is annoying. Let's leave without delay. What have you found in the chest, Holmes? What in there is so precious for these men to commit such terrible acts? The Reverend was telling the truth. Nothing important was locked inside the chest, apart from a few religious items which are hardly worth stealing. So, we haven't made any headway. Perhaps the police will. By the time the police arrive, we shall be a long way from here, Watson. We are leaving. What shall we do next, Holmes? Let us return to Baker Street as quickly as possible. What? Let us...